Welcome back to The Month Machine 2013. In today's video, we'll be looking at basic sample editing. I've gone ahead and added a little loop to my project, so before we get into editing it, let's take a listen to what it sounds like. You can get into the sample editing settings in one of two ways. The first is by pressing this button here, which says sampling. The alternative is that you can press the waveform looking icon, which is underneath the option for the piano roll. Once you're in the sample editing settings, you then want to go ahead and press the button over edit or press edit in the software to go to the sample editing tab. Now that we're in the edit tab, you can see that there is a waveform displayed of the sample that we have loaded into the sample slot. You can see it both in the software and also on the right LCD of the hardware. If you want, you can go ahead and use knob five to zoom in. And you can also use knob six to scroll horizontally along the waveform. This will help you later when you are editing the start and end points of the waveform. If you want to preview the sample, you can go and click on this speaker icon next to the file name. So I'm going to go down here and press on this, and then we'll just take a listen to that sample again. The preview lasts for as long as you are holding down the button. So if we go ahead and preview this again, but only hold down the button for a short time, you'll see that the sample will not play all the way through. Now let's look at some of the sample editing controls. On the hardware, they're broken down into three different pages. So on the first page is the trim settings. So that would be the start and the end point of the sample. So you can go ahead and use these knobs to adjust where the sample starts and also where the sample ends. You can see there as I move the end point that it scrolled with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and just move this start option a little bit back. Then I'm gonna move the ending point as well. So now, instead of playing the entire sample, it just plays this section. With looping enabled, the audio in the selected region will loop for as long as the sound is triggered. So I'm gonna go ahead and change loop mode to enable. And here you can see that we also have a start and end point. So I'm gonna go ahead and move these back to the point that we had. Just gonna move it on this particular section here. So I'm going to go ahead and trigger the sample and you'll see that it will start at our starting point, but once it gets to the loop region, it will loop in that section. There's one other additional option, which is the crossfade, and that will determine whether or not the looping sounds crossfade between each other. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn off loop mode as we go to our last section. So I'm going to go ahead and press the right button to go to the next page, and this is where we have the attack and delay envelopes. These settings adjust the amplitude envelopes of the sound. That essentially is the adjustment of the speed of which the volume change occurs when the sound starts and ends. Now that we've looked at the basic sample settings, let's go on to the audio editing functions that are inside Machine. You can access them in two ways. The first is by going in the software and clicking on this arrow here next to the length of the sample. The second option would be to use these two buttons here to adjust which type of setting you want to choose you should be aware that when you're using these audio editing functions that machine will actually create new audio files each time that you use them. Those audio files should be located in the same directory as the original sample, and you can go ahead and click on open containing folder to locate them. You'll know if you're using a different audio file because there will be a number in the file name that you see to the left. I should also point out that machine won't always save those audio files after you close the project. It generally only saves the one that you're currently working with. So make sure that you save your project. And if you really want to save out different iterations of a file, that you use the save sample as option that you see at the bottom of this drop down menu. So now let's take a look at the different audio editing functions that are in this drop down menu. So I'm going to go ahead and press truncate. And there you can see that now we have just shortened that sample and it is only the part that we have selected. The next option we have is normalize. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. What that'll do is it will increase the volume of the sample to the loudest possible value without distorting. So it's gonna essentially normalize that section of the audio to be as loud as it can be. Go ahead to the next one, which is reverse. Pretty self-explanatory, click it, and it will reverse that section of the sample. Once again, we'll continue on. This is fade in, so it will add a fade into the sample. Next is fade out, that would add a fade out to the sample. Next, we have DC Fix, which will remove the DC offset. This is useful if there are clicks at the beginning or the end of your sample, and by using this option, you can sometimes get rid of them. Continuing on to our next one, we have Silence, and what that does 
is it simply just removes all the audio from that particular section. The next couple of options are really handy if you like to do a lot of timeline editing of the sequence. So we'll go through them. We have cut, copy, and paste. These functions work exactly as they sound, as you're probably familiar with cut, copy, and paste. Then we'll continue on. We have DUPL, which stands for duplicate. That'll just duplicate the selected region. So I can go ahead and just press duplicate a couple times, and you'll see that now we have that section looped three or four times. The next option we have is stretch, and that is for time stretching the audio sample. We'll be going over this in another video later in the month, so be sure to check that out. So that is an overview of how you can do sample and audio editing inside of Names of Instruments Machine from both the software and the hardware controller.